Today, we're going to draw this picture of New England Lobster Fishing Village. Now, you notice there's an interesting perspective to this, where you're looking down, sort of, on the tops of the buildings and the boats resting out there in the bay. So I want you to get a straight edge or a ruler of some kind if you feel that you can't draw a straight line freehand. Of course, you want to practice those straight lines freehand, too. But here in the foreground, let's start by putting in the line of the dock, slant it up a little bit like that. Actually, our vanishing point is going to be way up here in the upper left-hand corner. Now, if we set the base of a building, say, here, this line should aim at that vanishing point. And if we put, say, the upper edge of a building in up here, it also should slant up to that point. But what do you say we try freehand in blocking in the vertical lines first? Think of these buildings as being cube-like forms that are setting right on this platform of the dock. Now there you've got a small cube and a tall cube. But the conventional New England building has a pointed roof, so you add that triangular shape of the roof, carry the ridge across like that. Then right on top here, another small cube form straddling the ridge of the roof. Actually, there's a small eave overhanging like that. Now, instead of leaving this as a flat horizontal top, let's make this a slanted roof like that. So you see how we are constructing, just as a builder would construct the uh, foundation parts of his building. Now, here we'll set another small building on the dock. Again, make your vertical lines for this rectangular area, add the triangular shape of the roof. And here again, I want to point out that if you find you can't make those freehand lines aim at that imaginary vanishing point, go ahead and use a straight edge, a T-square, a ruler, or something like that. But it won't be long until you can handle those freehand sketches without the use of a ruler. As a matter of fact, you get more charm in your picture if you do it that way. Back here in the distance, we'll have another small dock just barely peeking into the upper left-hand edge of the picture. And uh, let's put a little tone on the top surface of the dock there. And notice that if you just rub it like that with a paper stomp or your fingertip, you can soften it. Then we'll darken the front edge, suggest some posts, pilings. Later, we'll put in reflections. But let's move down here to the foreground, see what we can do with this area in giving it some more solid tone and color. In this case, in this picture, we're going to have our light coming in from the upper left. So the right-hand sides of the forms will be shaded. Let's shade the side of the chimney and the roof also. Then this side of this small building, the side that's turned away from the light. And the slope of this roof. So you see, by using a chalk on its side like this, you can block in those large areas of tone rather quickly. Now for some tone on this sloping roof and some light tone on the surface of the building here. But you notice there isn't much contrast between the light and dark side. Now you can use a black chalk and you can start putting in still darker tone on the shaded side of this form. That way you get the contrast of the light and dark sides and it creates the illusion of it's being a solid building. Then the eave would have a dark under edge like that, shade darker on the side of the chimney, and the same on this building. So you build it up from, say, a gray tone to a still darker tone on the shaded side. This surface of the roof you can make gray. Pretty soon we're going to add some more uh, 
interest to this picture, now let's think of putting some tone on this dock and suggest a piling here. That's a post. Think of it as a cylinder form. So today we're working chiefly with cube forms and cylinder forms. Now, this chimney, we'll make it just as a flat shape first, but see what happens when you draw the rectangular top and then shade this side of it. Back here, we're going to sketch in some lobster boats. Those are almost like the old double enders. High bow, high stern, and set it there in the water. We might have another one back here also. One of the first things I want to do is use a short piece of chalk on its side and suggest the shingles of this roof. Notice how the crayon does it sort of magically itself. Let's put shingles on this roof also. This one too. Instead of using the black, let's just use the dark gray on this one. Then on the shaded side, we can use the black because where it goes in shadow, it should naturally go darker. Then we need a little shading under this eave and some lines of texture of the boards, the clabbered effect running this way at a slight angle and block in a good dark area to suggest a window. Here on the surface of the building, again, the lines would converge from this imaginary vanishing point, but instead of using a ruler or a straight edge, let's just try putting them in freehand like this. They might not be exactly right, but you'll get a little more charm in your picture if you do those lines freehand. Then, horizontal strokes, use it black so that they'll show up on that darker shaded side. Blacken in a window, then a pair of them here, another window here, and a door. All this on the shadow side naturally wouldn't show up a great deal, even in actual scene in daylight. Now let's give some shading to the side of this cylinder form of the piling here and make the elliptical top of the post. Do the same with the small one at the right. Cast a shadow across the flat surface of the dock here. And again, using that imaginary vanishing point, put in the lines of the boards there on the dock. Yes, you might suggest some lobster crates setting here. Tie a rope, let it dangle. But out here, we want to moor this boat. Let's put in about three posts at random. Put in some shading on the side of the lobster boat. Then an upside down image, which is its reflection, and kind of shatter that image to make it look as though the water is slightly moving. Do the same beneath each of these posts out there in the water. Shade the side of this boat, give a reflection, reflection from the dock, reflection from the pilings, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to put a little shading on the side of these pilings, a little shading there on the reflection, dark accent on the gunnel and the hull, might even darken the inside of the boat a bit, and tether it to one of these pilings. Darken the accent right at the water line and in the top edge of the boat. Now there are many other things you could do, such as softening those reflections. Notice with a piece of cleansing tissue, I can soften them like this to get more of that glistening effect of the water. Same with these. And let's not forget to cast a shadow across this dock here. So, that's about all there is to it. We'll put the frame on our picture. And I'd like you to take another look.